A little over a month ago, I made the micro all-in-one snail aquarium. That's a pretty cool setup that's doing extremely well to this day. When I purchased the container for that build, I got a few others that I thought could make for cool projects. One of which is this acrylic organizer. I presume its intended use is for pencils or something like that. My brain sees things a little bit differently though, and as soon as I laid eyes upon this, all I could see was a paludarium. That's going to be easier said than done though. This will also be an all-in-one system. The container lends itself perfectly for it because of the taller area on the back. It has a built-in divider which can be transformed into a baffle. Even so, I'll have to modify a few things. I want water to enter in through an overflow on the right side, just below the viewing area up front. That's an easy edit. Once water enters into this compartment, it will pass through the mechanical and biological filter medias. Most likely I'll have to add another baffle for that to work properly. I'll have to put an opening in this piece as well, so water can pass into the pump vault. From there, the submersible pump will send the water back into the main area and create a loop. More on that shortly. Anyway, I'll modify this container now, starting with the overflow. For proper placement, I put down tape and made a few markings. A Dremel tool outfitted with a cutting wheel will make it easy to create an opening. I went along the bottom of the line and worked through the acrylic. It's not my cleanest work, but that's fine because it will be hidden later on. As I said before, I also had to carve through the bottom of the divider. Now that I have those taken care of, I'll add a few baffles. To make these, I've selected some expanded PVC board. I made a few measurements and cut them down to the size you see here. I'll secure both of these into the first compartment with super glue. I applied it to the appropriate edges and sent them into the container with tongs. You'll see here that I secured the short one first. I used this to better determine where to put the second one. Unfortunately, when working with super glue, if you have any moisture in the system, it will gas off and turn things white as you see here. It certainly doesn't look nice now, but when we're done scaping, you won't even be able to notice it. So bear with me as we go through this explanation. Anyway, I set this up in such a way that water will overflow in through the first opening. Here it will pass through the mechanical filter media, which is a coarse sponge. This will filter out fine particles. From there it will flow under the baffle, up and over into the next compartment. Then it will be pulled through the biological filter media, which is lava rock chunks. From there it travels through the bottom opening here, into the pump vault, and out into the main area. I'm not quite sure how that will look, so in the meantime I'm going to build up some of the scape and I'll return to it later. For this one I decided to use some Oko Dragonstone. It's easy to build up into cool formations, so it's probably one of the best choices for the design I have in mind. They're also really easy to break down into more manageable pieces. In this case, I'm using a brick chisel to split the stones along the grooved areas. I gave these small chunks of spray down to remove excess debris. The result are pieces more suitable for the scale of this build, which I can combine back together to create a completely new formation. I placed these along the back of the container to get a sense of how I'd like to scape it. I liked what I saw and knew exactly how I wanted this to look from then on. With the direction to follow, I got a tube of silicone and got to work. I began building up a formation on the back like before. This time though, I locked them in place with the silicone. It took a while to find the right pieces, but patience is key. Something to mention here is that I made sure not to block the overflow. I did put rocks here, but they're oriented in such a way that water can still pass through. Anyway, after all of that, I left the silicone to sit for a few hours. When I broke up the stones earlier, a lot of debris was left behind. This stuff is great and still very useful, so I always keep it around. For example, I added another stone and applied super glue along the edges. Then I sprinkled on some of the rock dust and brushed off the excess. I love this technique because it makes it really easy to build cohesive looking formations. The dust also causes the glue to cure within seconds, which speeds up the construction process. Anyway, I repeated this throughout until I ended up with this scape. It's not yet complete, but it's a great formation to work from. Before proceeding any further, I thoroughly sprayed everything down to remove debris. I did this because I need to address the pump's return before adding more stones. 
I want a waterfall to cascade down from this back area here. You'll notice that I have an outcropping near the front. I want a waterfall in this area as well. To make this possible, I'll need to split the pumps or turn. Working with what I had, I decided just to stick two air lines into a larger vinyl tube. This is not watertight, so I added hot glue around and within the tubes to seal it off. I connected this all to a reducer, another tube, and finally the pump. With this, I can divert the flow of water to multiple areas. I filled it up to determine how the water flows. I had to adjust the placement of them, but it all looked good. As I found what works, I trimmed off some of the right tube. I went on to glue it to the rock work using the techniques from before. Encasing it in rock ensures it will stay put. I repeated this process for the second tube, leaving me with what you see here. All of the tubing is hidden within the scape, which will keep everything secure. I really like how it looks, and I know it's only going to get better from here. I went on to clean everything off again to remove debris. It could work like this, but the plants will grow better with some sphagnum moss. I rehydrated it and stuffed it into cracks and crevices throughout the hardscape. This is always one of the parts that I'm most excited about because the plants really bring this setup to life. And I've got a great selection here. I originally went with Calicia repens rosato, Golden Baby Tears, Syngonium Mini Pixie, the Slaginella species, and Java Moss. I took the plants down to the bare roots and got to work. I primarily added them to the right side of the scape among the rocks. As I did, I made sure the roots would be in the water feature itself. I peppered in the Slaginella and Baby Tears for more texture. Then I went on to add the moss. I placed patches over the sphagnum and within various cracks. To be honest, after all of this, I really wasn't feeling the layout. I liked the hardscape, but something about the plants just didn't sit well with me. So I removed everything but the moss and started over. I added the syngonium first. Then I worked in the Slaginella. I topped all of this off with more moss. I personally think this looks a little more appropriate. There's just a better sense of scale and depth. It's still missing something though. Some small pieces of driftwood seemed like the appropriate element to bring it all together. I added these in a way that they blend with the stones. I wanted them to organically wrap around and look cohesive. As I did, I decided to include another rock down in the water feature. I used this to add more plants and moss. This allowed for a better transition into the water. I drained it out and got some natural colored sand. I added a thin layer throughout and redistributed it with a fan brush. Top this all off with smaller bits of stone to add more texture. I don't know about you, but I tend to think that something like this looks much better with floating plants. Due to the small size though, my only real option here is duckweed. The only thing left to do now is add the light. There you have it, the mini all-in-one paludarium. It's a tiny system that's perfect for a tabletop display. I'm pleased with the result, and I'm glad I didn't give up on it. As you saw, I wasn't crazy about it earlier, and if I'm being truthful, I almost scrapped it all together. I knew it had potential though, so I continued. Overall, I really like the vibe of it. I think that's due in part to the plant selection. Had I went with anything other than green, I don't think it would have the same feel. I'm also really glad that I added the branches. That's not what I originally intended for, but I think they add to what I was going for. 
To me, this scene really reminds me of a cove or something of that nature. As an artist, I tend to see things a little differently. Instead of seeing an organizer, I saw a paludarium, and now you do as well. That's pretty cool if you ask me. Anyway, that's all I have for you in this one. As always, I hope you all enjoyed the project and learned something new. Until next time, Surfer Squad, take care and peace.